Okay, so Zika virus disease is a generally a mild disease um, caused by a virus transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same mosquito that transmits chikungunya and dengue fever. We confirmed Zika virus disease earlier this year, and persons would know that it's a similar trend in most um, Caribbean countries and in the Latin American countries as well. Zika has never been in the, in the Caribbean region um, before. So it has entered a population, it has entered St. Lucia and similar um, Caribbean countries. It has found a population that is what we call immunologically naive. We've never had any encounter with the disease, so we've never had an opportunity for us to develop antibodies um, to the disease to be able to fight um, the disease on our own. So essentially what this means is that the disease is going to follow a pattern similar to what we saw with chikungunya. However, given that it's a relatively mild disease where only one out of every four or five persons who are infected may actually have symptoms, the general impact that we're going to see in the community is going to be much um, of a much lesser or uh, lower degree as compared to what we saw with chikungunya, although it's still going to, going to have impact. What we have noted is that we, over the last um, two to three weeks, we've seen Okay, over the last two to three weeks, we've seen a gradual, very mild, but gradual increase in the number of persons coming to our primary care facilities, but persons actually coming in with complaints of rash, of an itchy rash. Um, so that seems to be the main complaint. So it's not the typical um, florid, high fever, joint pain, etc. It's mostly um, a rash, that they've had a rash for a few days and it's, it's on the face, it's on the upper body and it's very itchy and uncomfortable. Um, so when they come, most of the times, by the time they come, they have no fever. So our usual undifferentiated fever syndrome um, system doesn't really pick up those cases. So what we've done is that we've developed a new surveillance system um, to capture rash as well as a possible um, history of fever. And so we are seeing, like I said, uh, an increase in the number of cases. It's not significant, but it is definitely um, outside of what we normally see. So as we're saying, most of the persons, they come in with the complaints of rash. Um, very few may have a red eye, um, and even, uh, even fewer may have joint pain, especially in the small joints of the hands and the feet, but it's, it's mostly the rash. So the other thing about Zika, um, unlike chikungunya or dengue fever, where there are rapid tests um, that can quickly identify whether someone has a disease or not, that's not the case with Zika. The tests, the rapid tests that we have, the rapid laboratory tests that there are for Zika virus disease are not very reliable. So someone with the disease may get tested by the rapid test and it may be positive, it may be negative. It's like it's not reliable. It wouldn't definitely tell you that you have the disease or you don't have it. So laboratory testing or depending on the, on the lab confirmation of the disease is not um, really the ideal for Zika virus disease. What we have also noticed, we continue to send samples to CAFA. CAFA um, because they have, they've taken care of so many Caribbean countries, they've advised that countries send about five samples um, to them each week. We continue that surveillance, and out of that surveillance, we have an additional four confirmed cases of Zika virus disease. So up to, to, to this point, we have eight confirmed cases of Zika virus disease on island. However, I, I would quickly um, indicate that, as we've said before, Zika virus disease is a largely asymptomatic disease. So the fact that we've confirmed eight cases doesn't mean we have eight cases of the virus on the island. We know that there are many more, and we know that there are many persons who have it and have no idea they have it because they have no symptoms at all, because it's generally a mild disease. 
Um, so out of the eight persons, initially we, we indicated when we confirmed four that we had one pregnant woman. So of the additional four, we have two additional pregnant women. So at this point in time, we are monitoring um, three pregnant women who have contracted the virus early in pregnancy. And these women are being followed up closely by the obstetric and gynecology specialists. We know that Zika virus disease has been associated with microcephaly or abnormality in newborns, especially when women get infected early in the pregnancy. But even then, it's not a given that a pregnant woman will have a baby with um, these complications. It is possible, and there have been cases where women are infected with Zika virus and yet go on to have normal, healthy babies. So the obstetrician and gynecologist um, is following them up. In addition to that, Zika virus is a bit different from dengue and chikungunya because we've heard that Zika virus can also be transmitted sexually, which isn't something we heard with dengue or chikungunya. Um, there have been increasing re reports in, in the first world countries of cases where um, persons visited the Caribbean, went back home, had relations with their partner, and then the partner became infected, although there's no mosquito you know, in the, in the country where they are. And so the studies are continuing because it's actually the first time that the World Health Organization is, is getting such an opportunity to study um, a new disease um, in this part of the world. And what they have realized is that the virus actually stays alive and viable quite long in, in, in a man's semen. So if a man has been infected with Zika virus disease, he may have no symptoms, or he probably would have mild symptoms like the rash we've seen and recover from it in about a week. But the virus can actually live in, in the sperm for weeks, and some say per, possibly up to about six months. So it's, it hangs around a bit um, in men. And that's why we're also adding the, the additional pre precaution of um, advising persons and um, persons who um, know they are infected or if there are p their partners, you know, notice any sign of illness to practice safe sex um, um, practices, um, use condoms, use barrier methods to prevent um, the partners from being infected. So the mosquito is still the main mode of transmission. The Aedes aegypti mosquito um, biting an infected person and then biting someone else is still the main mode of transmission. However, as the, as the disease evolves and um, in the country and more persons become infected, whether they know they have it or not, the possibility of sexual spread um, also increases. So that's something we'd also like to remind um, the public about. Um, Carnival is, is coming very soon, and we know we would likely have visitors um, to our shores. Visitors should note the guidance being provided by the World Health Organization, CDC, and other agencies where they're advising, especially pregnant women, um, that they may wish to consider um, avoiding unnecessary, tra unnecessary travel to places with the Zika virus disease. You may have been following WHO's guidance in terms of the um, Olympics in Rio. They have not canceled it, although we know that there, is a, there are many cases of Zika virus in, um, in Brazil. So I guess it's a similar guidance here. Persons know that we're in the Caribbean. It's a tropical area. We have mosquitoes. So there's Zika, there's dengue, there's chikungunya. But persons still want to come in and enjoy themselves, take the necessary precautions. Ensure you use um, the long sleeve clothing, um, use mosquito repellents on the skin, um, avoid getting bitten by mosquitoes, take all the necessary precautions, get rid of the breeding places, the uncovered drums and the refuse and anything, especially during this rainy season, which can trap water and provide a breeding place for mosquito. So we are to get rid of all of, all, all of those things whilst protecting ourselves from becoming infected. So essentially, the ministry wants to um, remind persons that um, we may not be seeing the impact that we saw with chikungunya because, as we said, Zika virus is largely a mild disease. So many persons um, may have it and not even know they have it. We're seeing persons with a rash, which we believe is associated with, with the virus as well. But we're reminding persons that it's largely a mosquito-borne disease, so 
preventing your cells from being bitten and taking measures to prevent the breeding of mosquitoes can decrease your risk. And of course, consider the sexual aspect in terms of um, taking precautions and practicing safe sex with someone who may have been infected.